Welcome. This is episode number four of In the House, and my name is Mark Scheiber. So glad to have you listening, watching on Zoom, and uh, just very excited. We have had some tremendous feedback already in the short history of In the House. So excited about the momentum, and no better way to keep that momentum going than talking to my good friend, Representative Mike Clampett. Sir, welcome. Thank you. It is great to be here today. Oh, man, I'm so excited that you are uh, joining me on In the House. Now, uh, you represent District 119, which is Haywood, Jackson, and Swain counties. And yes, sir. And that's, that's nowhere near Raleigh, is it? <laughs> uh, it's about 313 miles from the front door of this building uh, of the legislature to my back door back home, about five and a half hour drive. Oh, my goodness. Well, that, that kind of... Uh, fears me off a little bit. I wasn't going to ask you this, but Representative Clampett, that's a long drive. And it's a long week when y'all are in session, yes. particularly when you're doing things at the end, like the budget, and you're here till one, two o'clock in the morning. What is it that inside of you that makes you want to get in that car and drive that distance and stay here all those hours? What is What is propelling you to serve the people of North Carolina? That's a, a very good question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, uh, that is uh, a drive within me to be a public servant. Uh, all my adult life has been in public service. I started out as a volunteer firefighter at Winston-Salem back in the 70s. Uh, I careered with Charlotte Fire Department 28 years. I was director of fire and rescue at Central Piedmont 14 years uh, in, in dual employment. And I just have the drive of being a public servant and for back home, uh, being a representative of our folks uh, back there that uh, have never really had a good local representative representing them. And when I say good, I, I aspire to be good. But with that being said, it was 107 years uh, since we had anyone else elected uh, on my side of the house uh, wow. from Swain County. And it turns out that person was from Alarca uh, a little community, and I will, I'm i from Laura Lark, so. <laughs> well, um, it is a, a, a long drive and a long week, a long session, typically, and this time, however, we're in the short session, and um, it seems that Speaker Moore is committed to making it a short session, so um, while there are some bills that have gotten a lot of people's attention from the Senate side, they may not be heard this session uh, in the House. And so are you excited about the possibility of winding up uh, earlier than September, October, November? Well, we did have a marathon session last uh, long session, and that's one of the longest sessions in history of the state of uh, the General Assembly. Uh, hopefully it will be a short session. There are a lot of projects uh, back home and uh, other leaders, legislators have to do in their particular areas. Uh, I have uh, those three counties, Swain, Jackson, Haywood at the moment, but in the next election process coming up in November, uh, I'll be losing half of Haywood and picking up Transylvania County. Oh my goodness. Uh, and that will be a new experience for me. It, I liken it to getting transferred to a new fire station. Uh, I'll be meeting new people, a uh, new area and whatnot. And with that being said, I embrace that opportunity to make new friends, uh, to make new inroads, and to take and, and have new challenges. And uh, that would, the board will be, uh, in Transylvania County, will be very exciting, I'm sure. Already is. I've been down there several times. Uh, and speaking of a drive, from my home to Bavard is a two-hour drive. One way. <laughs> well, um, we won't get into anything political here on this particular uh, episode of In the House as we're focusing on policy. And one of the things that is hot off the press, you were right square in the middle of, in that the House passed, let me get it right, uh, Joint Resolution 1170 yes. this week, which you sponsored. And um, tell us about it. Okay, 1170 was a, a House Joint Resolution I had introduced concerning the parking fees in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Uh, the G GSMRP was the most visited park in the national park chain. 
And that being the case, it's 14.2 million people. Uh, wow. That many people attending a, a park. And, and that includes people going over 441 from uh, Cherokee to Gatlinburg that may not be staying, but, but that's what they use to traverse. Right. You know, to get from one place to another. And anyhow, point being with that is uh, the park was looking at a funding stream to be able to enhance their maintenance of trails, their, uh, their saying parking and increase the amenities, which is not true uh, to that aspect. There's, there's no real master plan with the park uh, to take and increase the parking area. Uh, it goes deeper than just the fact that it's another tax on our people uh, to visit the park. Uh, there has a long tradition of distrust with the federal government back home. Uh, the road to nowhere was promised to the people of the Swain County and that part of North Carolina back in 1943 called the 43 Agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, when they built Fontana Dam, they flooded several towns and cities and communities and businesses. Uh, the largest lumber mill in the southeast was Ritter Lumber Company on Hazel Creek. Uh, it uh, processed one million board feet of hemlock a year. Uh, it pulled hemlock from all the way from Clayman Stone down into the valleys down to the what's now called Lake Fontana. Uh, you had towns of Judson, uh, Harsh Corn, Japan, North Carolina, uh, Almond. Uh, Almond had a high school. There were 6,000 people that lived between Fontana Dam, the town of Fontana, and Bryson City. So we built the lake uh, for the world uh, war effort, and that was the promise uh, that Oak Ridge, the, the power would go to Tennessee to build a bomb. Uh, but they said, because we flooded the area and took away these homelands, actually evicted some people uh, in making a park. But that part of it was, uh, we'll build this road. Well, the road was never built. There are approximately 150 cemeteries that are documented in the park. Over one third of those are in North Carolina with 1,100 people that's still interred above the high water bar, which is 1710. There are 600 miles of second hurry roads in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park that uh, you can use just about any vehicle to drive. I mean, they've started growing up in the last 78 years. But with that being said is, and where I'm going, uh, the park made a promise that they would take and ferry people over to visit their graves of their deceased and friends. Right. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's an agreement that's there. And in doing so, uh, these people have to park on park property to be able to be ferried over. Well, the insult to injury is not only do they take the people's property uh, traditionally, and I'm six generations, and I had folks that lived in all those little areas we're talking about. Wow. Uh, some were uh, reinterred back in uh, another piece of land in Swain County. But, you know, it's insult to injury that, one, we took your property. Uh, two, we're hesitant about honoring our agreement. And in three, we're going to take and charge you as an individual to come and park while you go visit your ancestors and your family and friends' gravesites to honor their memory. Right. It, it, it's just a distrust of the federal government. You know, it's another overreach by uh, a tax, in my opinion. We're already paying federal tax to get the park up. I've been in contact with Tillis's office already about increasing funding. Uh, you know, and it also goes back to the 43 agreement uh, when they decided not to build a road. And in 2010, uh, the state uh, and the federal government, they everybody got an agreement, said, OK, we'll just pay North Carolina for the road. Well, they made an earnest payment of about 12 million. And then they said, well, we'll pay the rest of it whenever we get the funds. Well, put off, put off, put off, put off. So when I was here in my first term, I introduced a bill to sue the federal government. And uh, also to go to have the attorney general and the governor's office to do with that. Well, long story short, uh, friends in Washington, Ryan Zinke at that time was Department of Interior uh, Superintendent. And we had Meadows and we had Burr uh, and tell us. Uh, I pushed very diligently on that and we got the other 38 million. So we had the total of the 52 million finally awarded to Swain County in July of 2018. Wow. And that money is held in escrow with the state treasurer's office. Can a principal can't be touched, only the interest. So again, another distrust of the federal government that for 75 years, they, they had a promise in a contract. They never followed through. And now, and, and another thing, morally, 
it's bothersome to me to take and want to charge individuals to go enjoy the beauty of the park of the people. It is a park of the people and to take and charge them to parking to enjoy God's creation and the beautiful vistas and areas that, that we have in North Carolina. It's just, to me, it's just morally wrong. Right. And, uh, you know, the feds have the ob uh, obligation to take and pay for the upkeep and maintenance of the park, et cetera. It, by the way, it takes five other parks to equal the number of visitors we have to our one park. But the funding stream, it's, it's unlike it is here in the state legislature that if we have an area that that has increased usage, we increase the funding stream based on that usage, right? Makes sense. Well, federal government goes the other way. Uh, the more it's used, the less we're going to fund it. And yeah. that's, uh, that's what they've done with that. And like I said, it's near and dear to my heart. It's ancestral, not only to the indigenous, indigenous peoples of the Cherokee, et cetera, but also the white settlers that came in the 1800s. Some of those people were actually evicted from their property for the, to be made Great Smoky Mountain National Park. Wow. And that's 128, approved in 20, 1933 by uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, made a, a big declaration to claim the stone, et cetera. But the one caveat on our park is not charging and it cannot charge an entrance fee, thanks to Tennessee. Because in 1951, Tennessee enacted a law that said because of the road, which is 441, goes between Cherokee and Gatlinburg, and we have half of it in North Carolina, they have the other half, Right. said that there would be no fees charged uh, and the federal government's to maintain and keep that up. Now, sad to say, North Carolina went the other route. They gave up our part of 441 to let it be under federal control. But because of Tennessee's action, no fees can be charged to enter the park anywhere. Well, Thank that's you. good. And I'm, uh, I want to talk about some other things that are that are going on uh, in the North Carolina legislature. But I appreciate that history. I wasn't aware of all of that. And, you know, I think uh, without getting, uh, let's not get too uh, carried away on, on this particular issue, Representative Clampett, but I would like to, to say that, you know, I've interviewed uh, several of the House members now, and each one has a district that has uh, people that have uh, history in their district and things that uh, motivate the people and that are uh, of deep concern to the people. But I would venture to say, uh, and again, I don't want to get too carried away on this, but I would venture to say that the folks in the North Carolina mountains really embrace their history and it's important to them like no other area in our state. And, and there's a lot of truth to that. It goes back to, we're very clannish uh, in a sense of our Scottish, uh, Irish background. Uh, right. uh, I've been able to go back to, to the Clampett uh, uh, clan as such, if you want to say it, it's part of the Clement clan. And we go all the way back to the Knights Temple. And uh, like I said, there's histories that are very important. Uh, family is very important. Uh, you know, God, family, country, that, that's us in the mountains. And yeah. we just uh, don't take too kindly of disrespecting uh, family, uh, God, country, and those that have passed on. Uh, and another one, I'll give one other aspect. Uh, another thing about the park upset me recently is I found out that volunteers were going to wanted to go in and put U.S. flags on the veterans' graves. And the park administration uh, from the superintendent's office in Gatlinburg said, no, you can't do that. What in the world? Uh, said they didn't have the staff and the time to go do that. And uh, that's, uh, I, I don't I don't take kindly to that either. Uh, that yeah. Honoring, yeah. honoring our, uh, our veterans that give us the country and the latitude and the freedoms we have and my ability to be sit, uh, sitting here is is a real slap in the face. So yeah. they even vol volunteered to take personal ATVs in and they got, every time they opened, tried to open the door, got shut down. Well, we don't allow that or we don't allow this. But anyhow, but uh, the guy that did ended up doing it walked seven miles into the park. I put and put those flags on those graves and walked seven wow. miles back out. So, yeah, you know, uh, uh, I could get, <laughs> I just, uh, I'm with you, Representative Clinton. When they start disrespecting our veterans, 
uh, that, that's just not right. I'll leave it at that. Um, so here we are. Uh, we're in the se short session. You mentioned that we had a marathon session, uh, the, the last one, which was the long session. For folks that don't know, uh, we run a biennium here in the legislature with a long session and then a short session. And one of the things that came out of that long session is the ability to meet some needs that ordinarily uh, were not able to be met uh, financially because there was uh, added revenue or, or unexpected revenue or additional revenue. And so a lot of the districts were able to do some things. And I think that you were able to help uh, your district uh, specifically with some uh, some additional money for infrastructure. Tell us about that. Yes, sir. We were very fortunate. The uh, state got a large sum of money on the art plan, uh, America Rescue Plan, because of the COVID and the other issues at hand. Uh, I'll, I'll focus on uh, Swain and Jackson counties. Uh, I did share uh, Haywood with uh, Mark Pless, and uh, we did a lot of stuff because we had the flooding and Crusoe over there. Mm -hmm. uh, regrettably, five people lost their life. But yeah. I have here one of the checks. Biggest check I've ever written in my life, by the way. <laughs> Uh, oh my goodness and it's a big check too yeah but as you can see whoa i presented that to uh <laughs> jackson and uh town of silva back in april wow. uh, that's awesome three hundred thirty-four thousand two hundred and seventy dollars and that money uh was money that was was needed for several projects yeah. uh, one of those projects had to do with uh Raven Fork on the stream uh, uh, bank enhancement to, to clear up because of the flooding issues we have. Another one was uh, three million for the Bryson Park. Uh, that's in the town of Silva. Uh, it's in a uh, area that is uh, depressed. And what it is, is a migration of the mountain off into the Chipper Road curve. And uh, there's, a, there's a playground there. Uh, it's a uh, a facility is used a lot and it was affecting infrastructure, water, sewer, and the roadway for emergency vehicles to get to the people's homes. And I was able to secure money to be able to make that repair uh, of those uh, roads and, and infrastructure with that. Another part was uh, Silva was requesting to help them with their tourism uh, because that's one of our, our actually most largest industry back home now. Right. It's, um, restrooms in the downtown area. And it was 250000 for that. And I just recently have seen uh, in news articles, they have finally approved what their plan is going to be. And it's going to look like a mini uh, depot, uh, railroad depot. And it fits into the area because uh, railroads were very important in the late 18, night and early 1900s up there. And then the last part, the public safety sheriff's department got uh, about $85,000. Wow. So that, was, that was in Jackson County. Now, let me turn my page over. <laughs> I had to have a cheat sheet, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah. Nice. Bryson City and Swain County, uh, there was 80, about 85,000 Sheriff's Department of Public Safety. Uh, again, the Alarca Community Center, which is what we call the old Alarca School, but it is also a public location, brought us out a fire station, a uh, volunteer fire station. And it was in disrepair. And, and sad to say, half the place burned. Mm. Very, very oh, boy. architecturally, uh, beautiful location, all rock on the outside, but anyhow, they were able to save part of it, and so in doing so, needed to have some repairs, so got them $50,000. Right. And our main street in Bryson City has some issues with the sidewalks and the uh, street lights. In fact, the same street lights I, I remember when I was five, six years old, uh, got them some 200000 mm -hmm. And uh, the Tuckasegee uh, Island, uh, we got some bee tree uh, furbishment there because we've had flooding and, and that's a real uh, tourist attraction. And then we have a recreational center for youth. It's only used like three days a week and uh, it's not heated or air conditioned. Well, they got money now to do that. I've got oh, money to uh, uh, heat <laughs> air conditioning so we can use it year round. And then our county fairgrounds is a new uh, project that started about three years ago. County acquired what's called the Old Inspirations Park. Uh, the Inspirations is a gospel quartet that originated in Swain County. 
I went to school with some of the boys and one of the teachers, uh, wow. uh, uh, Martin Cook was the math teacher when I was in high school. Anyhow, they started that and then they used to have annual uh, July 4th week gospel scenes. And like everyone else, they got older, like I got older. And <laughs> so they sort of, they moved away from that and the county acquired the property and has uh, a fairgrounds there. And so we need to have an enhancements for lighting and the parking lot to make it safe. So uh, that was uh, $896,270 for Swain, Bryson City area. Uh, and I got to mention, I got them, they needed an ATV to go over to the, governor, we call it Governor Island Park. And there's a lot of history that I won't go into it now. But anyhow, <laughs> yeah. So we have a lot of history in our area. And, and uh, I think that that's very important. And we should hold on to it, cherish it. Uh, some of it's not very pretty sometimes, but it's still our history. And uh, uh, we should be proud of who we are and live in the country we live in. Uh, I just spoke last week to a lady actually from Ukraine in Kiev. Wow. And I, uh, I was, that was quite a conversation I had with her about their uh, citizenship. Yeah. Uh, they're not a citizen. Uh, they're 16 years old when they get their uh, uh, passport, et cetera. Uh, they came to the United States 30 years ago as refugees. They went through the process of getting to be U.S. citizens, and uh, uh, she still has a, a very thick accent, and uh, it was a real pleasure talking to her. She uh, lives in Asheville and works at uh, the Home Depot store there. And like I said, to, to talk to her and hear of another country and to know what we have in our, our country, we are, we're beyond blessed. Yeah. God has, has, has enhanced our country so much and, and our people's lives. Uh, you know, all we hear is the negativism, et cetera. Well, I heard how it is somewhere else. And, and even, even with a worse day here in our country, it's a better day than it is in a foreign country. You know, um, and, uh, I've kind of let the time get away um, from us here, but I just, I got to say this, uh, Representative Plampett, I know that you feel the way I do. It just makes me so mad that people want to tear down our country and they don't have any appreciation, it seems. There's a whole group of people that don't have any appreciation for the freedom that we have for the ability that like me and you right here, right now, we're saying whatever is on our mind, we have freedom of speech and we can get up and leave here and go up the road and get a, 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 a soda pop if we want to, or a coffee and nobody's going to stop and ask us for papers. You know what I mean? Uh, if I wanted to, I could get in my car and drive all the way to Asheville and nobody's going to stop me. And yet there's a whole group of people in our nation who don't appreciate anything that we have they just want to tear it down boy that really fires me up and i know you feel the same way well uh I, let me give a parallel to that a little bit i started out as a volunteer firefighter in forsyth county winston salem area and that was in back in the 70s and, and i remember when i fired in the neighborhood uh it was not unusual for people to come out and and, and bring coffee if it's two o'clock in the morning or uh sandwiches and food etc and that was in the 70s. I retired in 2004 uh, out of Charlotte. And it was amazing to me, we could have a fire in the neighborhood and early morning, we'll say rush hour work time. Uh, the one thing people would be doing is, when are you gonna get that hose out of the way or move that fire? I gotta get to work. <laughs> and and I'd had, I, had, I had situations where I needed to interview uh, family members for a fire that they had in their home. Uh, unusual circumstances and we'll go into it but I'd ask them well, what neighbor are you close to and, and we can go to their house you know at two o'clock in the morning you know right and and I've had people actually tell me and I worked in her city for 18 years and I go I don't know any of my neighbors oh my goodness and and that's 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 really sad because it's yeah. not that way in the mountains I know my neighbors you know and uh, you know the, the, it's just our society's uh, moral compass uh, has become polarized or magnetized or whatever you want to call it, ties. And it's just a real shame. Uh, you said we're about out of time. Let me jump on one thing real quick, if you don't mind. We've talked about a lot of stuff, et cetera. 
let me tell you what the most important thing is I do down here. Yeah, and, I was going to ask you that. Oh, you want to think a lot. <laughs> so you go right ahead. Uh, you know, coming to Raleigh is great, and and the stature of being a representative is, you know, having that. And, you know, it's just like being a firefighter. I'm an ordinary guy in an extraordinary position. You know, I'm, yeah. uh, I'm going to stay humble by it. But the one thing that I do, and this office does, and I want people to know across the board, it's not passing laws. It's not taking and putting restrictions on anyone, anyone or anything like that. It's constituent services. Wow. I tell people my cell number all the time, 828-736-6222. You don't have to call Raleigh to talk to me. You can call me and talk to me personally, just like you know. Well, better than your neighbor, because you bad to say I just said you, most people don't know their neighbors. But constituent services, just recently, this week, I had a lady call uh, from home and said her husband had passed back in March. And he had been a teacher and she was trying to secure his uh, death benefit retirement and that she had been just closed door after closed door. And back to say the governor still has us under a state of emergency and a lot of the department divisions, uh, supervisors set up the schedule and people can work from home or whatever and whatever. I mean, I think we need to get our state back on track, but that's another story for another day. But, uh, she, she pleaded, she said, I, I need help because I'm financially being burdened here. I've gone three, you know, three months, nothing. And they have just told me it's going to be August. Goodness. You know, you know, what, three more months, two more, whatever it is. And I said, that's unacceptable. Uh, our state can do better than that. Yeah. And so I uh, uh, asked her to give me pertinent information, et cetera, so we can chase it down. And, and we did. Had a nice phone call from her whatever day this week, probably Wednesday. And she goes, which was yesterday, I'm just sorry. Anyhow, yeah. so thank you. I got my three months back pay, wow. you know, back benefit. And they've already started everything they're supposed to. I'm not going to have to wait to office. You know, the one, the things we do or whatever we do down here, to me, that's the most important. I mean, passing the law is great. You know, uh, it can benefit public safety, enhance people's lives, keep them secure, right. at work at home, at play, whatever, but constituent services. And, and I will say we have a, a, when I say success rate, I'm not back but we run about 95% to be able to make that phone call uh, to whatever government uh, division it is, whether it's DMV. Boy, DMV has been a real headache in the last year. Oh, my goodness. Don't say DMV. <laughs> that's, a, that's a story for two days down the road. But yeah. Anyway, oh, my. Uh, and, and the other part of it is, and let me give this side, you know, it, it's it's not all uh, cotton candy and ice cream cones. I can't help everybody. I'm bad to say there's just sometimes there's things beyond my control. Right. Uh, that I don't have any influence with. And, and I'll be very brief with one example. A uh, lady called about her son being incarcerated and wanted to be moved to a closer facility to their home. Naturally, we contact uh, the Division of Prisons and get their information for Department of Corrections. And come to find out this, this person had several infractions and had demerits. And I'm a believer in not rewarding bad behavior. Right. And so, bad to say, and I'm flat-footed and very honest with you, I had to call and say, ma'am, this is the problem. Your son has got these issues, and no, he will not be coming closer. You know, and, and that's in the minority, but still, that's the other side of the coin. You got to have the good with the bad and the bad with the good. I yeah. Mean, so, anyhow, well, with that. you know, Representative Clement, I appreciate your time. Uh, I, I would love to talk to you for uh, – a lot longer period of time where we could get into some of the great history of the mountains and and i'm sure you've got uh, tales to tell that would uh you know keep me on the edge of my seat but we are out of time i would like to say thank you for all that you do for not only the state of north carolina but for your district the good folks uh in district 119 uh haywood jackson and, and, and swain counties and i look forward to having you again as a guest on in the house Thank you so much for having me today. I appreciate it greatly. Thank you for your time. I know you see some pictures behind me. Let me give a shout out to my bride. Uh, do it this way, it be better. 
of Rod Tara. Yeah. And we've always uh, Rod and Henry. Uh, Tara and I got married just last uh, November. So uh, I'm very, when I say I'm blessed, I'm blessed more than I should be. Uh, Absolutely. Family and friend and, you know, here in Raleigh with all the friends I have here and fellow legislators on both sides of the aisle uh, and over in the Senate. We'll, we'll give them a little bit of <laughs> credit, not much, but thank you again. I appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you, sir. Have a great day. Have a blessed day. Thank you.